What's up guys, it's Connor here from Team Kingslayer. Uh, today I'm here because Devlin was kind enough to invite me to come make a video on his channel. Much appreciated. Uh, today I'm just going to talk about Bermuda Highlander. Uh, the way I'm thinking about running it in the future and the way I'm running it now. I'm super excited to talk about it because it did good in New York. And yeah, before we get into this video, I just want to once again say super appreciate Devlin for inviting me. And super appreciate everything Richard and James and everybody from Kingslayer does and just is. Everybody here is super nice people. But without further ado, let's get into the video. What's up, guys? This is the deck list that I'm currently using. Uh, just to get it started simply, this is the starter I use. Starter doesn't really matter unless you run Shirasuyu. She's a counter charger that specifically requires Shizuku, so it's good to have one, but you don't necessarily have to run it. Uh, here is the trigger lineup. Obviously the OT. Uh, right now I'm running four different one of crits. I'm just running the basic overdress one. Uh, it's the bang dream one, so it looks pretty. Uh, this is the overdress push to soul crit. Just the regular push to soul crit. And right now a one of of the goes to damage you draw card crit. The reason I'm running those as one ofs is because Federica, which I will get into later. Uh, three stride crits. Uh, if you don't have a grade three, just having a stride crit is really good. Uh, I run one sentinel crit because I like to hit crits and sometimes the 30k number really does help. Uh, one overdress draw trigger because I cut down on one draw just to be able to have the crit sentinel. But... I still like to draw cards, so the one overdress draw sentinel or the one overdress draw does come in clutch instead of the extra draw sentinel. And then last but not least, four heals. Uh, you run heals in every deck, pretty much. Maybe not the Melista deck, but I'm not a fan of that deck, so I don't count that as an actual deck. So, in case you missed any of the triggers, I'm sure Devlin will also have a deck log down below. Those are all the multiple triggers, and then these are all the one ofs. Uh, just one last little grade zero. We do run the one of Bikun, just because having Bikun in certain situations really can just help make or break a game. I can't explain how many games I've won just off having the Bikun. It feels so nice. I, I tried to take him out, but you really just can't. Uh, since we're not running the four Sentinels in the Trigger deck, uh, this is the last one in the main deck, Elementaria. Uh, I tried playing without it for a while, but against DP, you just really want to have this card. It's really good. Uh, now, as for the Grade Ones, we have our one of Hanali. I would definitely run more if this wasn't Highlander. Uh, we have the one Justine. She's really good on stride turns mainly, but also on ride down turns is where I use her the most. On stride turns, you just discard her off Heltrada or off Reindeer or something and you call her. But on turns where you are riding down, you can discard her for Reindeer and then continue Reindeer's effect, then use her effect to Soul Blast out the Reindeer and call herself. So she's really useful for riding down. Also, just for more attack pressure on stride turns. Uh, Yuika, she's mainly here just because she's super good at helping ride down. But later in the game, she also can just be a 13k booster. Now, one of my favorite grade ones that I don't think I saw in the list from New York. I don't know why you wouldn't run Resius, but Resius is such a good card. She just, on offense, if you want to use her, you just give something plus 10k. Or on defense, you can G-Guard, call her down, and then give yourself 10k for the turn. So essentially, you'd be making a trigger on defense. It's really good. Uh, Sedna, she's just a grade 3 searcher. Uh, she has something in the same column. She gains 5k. Really good beat stick. Really good, just helps you find your reindeers overall, or your heals if you need them. 
uh, Myrtle, she is here to help you send stuff back to the deck pretty much. Or she's on board whenever your Vanguard rerides uh, Reindeer, as in the grade 3 or the grade 4 after Reindeer's attack. She will give it 10k. Betty, one of my favorite cards just in the clan overall. You look at the top 7, if all of them are different, you just get to add something back, send something back. So like, let's say you have the OT in your hand, you want it in the deck. Or you have a grade 4 you want to send back. You pop her off the top. Oh, look! I will grab a Pearl Sister. Send back this grade 4 I want in my deck. Uh, Mirtoa. Funny enough, this deck also does run her. I've been seeing a lot of people say we should ban her because of the Melista deck. I really, honestly, just don't think that's the right call. The right call, in my opinion, would be banning either of the grade zeros, preferably Weddell. Because decks like this deck use her to have really insane pressure after the stride. Um, I know my buddy plays Ange Premium. Ange Premium basically could not exist without one of, if not especially, both of these cards. Like, other decks just need Mirtoa. So if you wanted to do anything to the actual card, I would say limit it to like one. But that's just not necessary. I think you just hit Weddle and ban the Willis to Loop. Uh, this is Radka. Uh, she is here because on Vanguard, she is on hit, draw a card. And during the main phase, you can retire her to draw two cards. And then to finish up our grade one lineup, the Pearl Sister. I don't think I need to explain what she does. She is very good. If you are playing against Highlander, they probably have the Pearl Sister in their deck. The other Pearl Sister. Then we have Attractive Glow Sandy. Card's very good if you don't know what she does. Uh, she just is a free G-Guard, pretty much. Like, you discard her for the cost of G-Guard. And then, like, let's say you do have your Pearl Sisters on board. They're 28k cross turn. But, like, they go to swing at one with, like, a big number. You just pick it up. Because you use your G-Guard, pick it up. Easy. Klesina, uh, this is a very good promo that the deck got uh, back in 2022, actually. So not that long ago. We got this promo from BCS. Very good promo. Very good. I love this. Every time you can ride this card and use its effect, you probably will. Because it's literally just Counter Blast, Soul Blast, top three, one to hand, one to board, one to bottom. Like, who doesn't want to plus a card on board and hand? Just for a counter blast, soul blast. The card's very good. Um, this is Murata. Uh, she's okay. She's not bad. She's mostly just here if I have to ride her. This is what's going to get cut for Amelia, which you will see at some point in this video when I talk about the list that I'm cooking up. Because she's good. She's just not good enough, in my personal opinion. I would rather run a card that I can get more value on. Uh, here, Sistico, she sends stuff back to the deck, and if it's a grade 3 or greater, you can choose one of the rear guards and it won't stand next to her. Super good against, like, Narukami and other decks like that that have the restanding rear guards. You just make them lose an attack, ideally, or if it's against a restand clan, you make them have to waste their resource to restand it before they can attack with it. So, it's just a nice tool that recycles while also making them have to play around it. Uh, Aqua, she's extremely good. If I have something on the board that I want in my hand, pick it up. If I have something's on place that I want to use again, pick it up. Uh, pretty self-explanatory why this card would be good. Also gains 5k if you have something in the same column, so it's just a 15k beat stick along uh, as well. Uh, Lisa a lot. Uh, if you've ever played Bermuda, I'm sure you know exactly what Lisa a lot does. These two go hand in hand. Lisa a lot. You just call the top card off the top of your deck. Uh, you may call it a rear guard or put it to soul. Most of the time you call it a rear guard because you can just bounce it anyways. Eleanor, another important piece for riding down because I still like to have the option to ride down because there's a lot of decks even post history collection that just don't do that much on their ride up turn. So I like to like have the opportunity to ride down to just be able to beat them up. Like, you just ride down, beat them up, live their turn, ride up and kill them. So she's really good for that because she's on attack, soul blast 2, and she gains 15k. 
And then at the end of the battle, she goes to the top. So after your reindeer attacks, you swing with this, stack her to the top after you soul blasted out your reindeer, and then swing with your one drive, assuming you reroute a grade three and just get her back. Or worst case, you lose her to the damage, but she did her job. Uh, here we have Surya, just a really good generic card in Bermuda. Uh, it's on place, discard one, look at the top three. You add one of those to your hand, the rest go to the bottom. Uh, she gains 5k. And then if your opponent's on grade three or greater, she gains 10k instead of the 5k. So on place turn, she's a 15 to 20k beat stick that also just gets you free value. Like, free filter. You discard a card, look at top three, add a card. You don't even have to show them. It's great. Then, to wrap up the grade twos, we have Melty. Melty is just really good. If you have extra counterblast, any of that, just call her. Counterblast one, call something else, draw a card. So, like, let's say I had two counterblasts to waste. I could call Melty. Counterblast one, call Aqua. Aqua, bounce Melty. So then I'd get to draw a card off Melty, draw a card off Aqua, discard a card, play Melty, call something else, draw another card. Melty's just good. If you have extra counter blast to waste, she's an okay card. Now, to finish up the main deck, going into the grade threes, we of course have our four reindeer. You cannot play Highlander without having the four reindeers. Uh, Ansh, she's very good. Uh, if you don't know what Anj does, uh, on attack, counterblast one, bounce any number of rear guards. If you bounce two or more, she gains 10k. If you bounce three or more, you get a force marker. Yep, and then if you bounce four or more, you search your deck for any normal unit and call it. That's really good because it says bounce any normal unit, so you can pick theirs along with yours. My bad, guys. I was just having a brain fart. It's been a long day already. Uh, here we have Tirola. Uh, on place, Vanguard. Choose any number of normal units in any circle. Uh, face up, of course. You can't bounce lock. Bounce them to their owner's hand. If you bounce three or more, she gains 15k. And then if she's on Vanguard and you bounce three or more. Uh, at the end of battle, she attacked. Counterblast one. Discard a card. Restand with drive minus one. So it's really cool. Because you can do Reindeer, Swing, go off the top into Tirua, rebound your entire board, and then since you're on Vanguard, you gain the 15. So you swing again, 28, 38 if you have a Force Marker. At the end of the battle, CB1, ditch a card, restand. So essentially, if you strode that turn, you get four Vanguard attacks, or five. If not, then you get four. It's just really good. Uh, to finish up the grade threes, we have Lupina and Gerland. These are very good cards, but they're like worse versions of some grade fours we're running in the deck. Uh, Lupina, if you have to ride her instead of Reindeer for whatever reason, it's not the absolute worst. Because she does have a main effect. Uh, Soul Blast 2, look at the top 7, call something to a circle, and if it doesn't have a force marker, give it a force. But the more important reason we run her is for the on attack, counter blast 1, restand your units on force markers. And then Gerland, on place, top 7, if they're all different, which they will be, uh, call up to 2 units. So, like I said, these cards are good, but... This is just Lupina, but better, because it's on attack, restand your board, as long as they have different names. And then if you restood three or more, she gains a crit. So this is literally just Lupina, but free. This is just Gerland, but more free. It's on place, reveal the top ten, instead of the top seven. And then if all the normal units are different, you can call any amount of those cards to, that you want to the board, and they all gain plus 10k. Then, to finish up the main deck, we have a Nesco. Really good. On place, top 10. If they're all different, you get to make one of each gift. So, usually Excel 2, a Protect 1, and just an extra force. It's just really good. Really solid. So, here is the G-Zone. Uh, for starters, we have the 3 Heltrata. This card is the literal best stride in the deck, in my opinion. 
Uh, if you don't know what she does, on attack, discard three cards, bounce your entire board, including lock circles, all that good stuff. Then you call up the two. The end of the battle, counterblast, soul blast, D stride, restand a card from your soul. So basically, you swing with her. At the end of the battle, you go into reindeer. Reindeer's super good, as we've been over. Next, we have Federica. She says if the top 10 cards in your G-Zone are all different, different names, different everything, uh, you c reveal up to 5 mermaids from your G-Zone. So, Heltrata, Shandy, Tirua, Elprina, and Ange. You call them all to rearguard circles, and they just get to go to town. They all gain 15k and can attack from the back row. So, if you know your deck count, and you know that you have a bunch of one ofs in the deck, she could be a good play. She helps just cheese out games sometimes. Next up is Shandy. Shandy's very good if you're in a meh situation. Because what Sandy says is... So for every unit that you have in Harmony, which she has the Harmony ability. So usually you will just call one thing behind her. For everything that you have in Harmony, on attack, counterblast one. Look at the top ten. Call units equal to the number of units you have in Harmony. So you can call a front row pretty much. Or if for some reason you play a more harmony centric build and you can get six in harmony, she will gain a crit. That effect never comes up anymore. Next up, we have Tirua. Tirua is just a really good card. So if you have three triggers or three anything you want to send back to the deck and you're at GB3, you can stride Tirua. She says at the end of the battle that she attacked, GB3, send three things back to the bottom of your deck. Restand her with drive minus two. So swing, bot deck your back row, restand swing again. She's pretty good. Next, we have Alprina. She is our play if we get super damage denied and we don't have Tirua up and available. She says on place, or not on place, act, so you can do it during your main phase. That's another reason why I like her. Because there is one that's just on place, bounce two. She's main phase, soul blast one, bounce two. Really good. Helps you get your on place effects again. I like her. Next, we have on. She is like your slower answer to Link Joker. If you don't have the three cards to discard for Heltrata, you can just CB2, pick up the whole board. So it's not the best, but it, it's pretty good. It's not the worst. Lastly, for our units, we have the one of Messiah that we are forced to run. 20k shield is nice, and the tickets help in some matchups like Nubatama and Chaos. Uh, next, we have Citroen. She's probably my favorite G guard in the deck. She's really good. That's how you get your shenanigans with Resius going, or if you want to Betty on their turn to look for like Elementary or something like that. This is your girl to cheese stuff out on their turn. Uh, here we have the G-Guard that came out with Heltrata in the Premium Collection. She's really good. She says Counter Blast 1. Uh, if it's a grade 2 or less that you pick up, because it has to be a normal unit, she gains 15k shield. So she could just be a 30k shield. Or if it's a grade 3 or greater, your Vanguard gains 5k for the turn. So it's either a little half trigger or a 30k shield. Either way, it's nice. Hand in Hand Leona. She's good because she doesn't take a counter blast to pick anything up, but the drawback is you have to call a card from your hand to guard circle after you use her. So you have to be careful when you use her, but she can pick you stuff up without counter blasting. Then last but not least, we have the Sandy G guard. She just gets really big for the amount of cards you have in hand. For every two cards in hand, she gains 5k shield, and then you can counter blast for an extra 5. This is the updated deck I'm working on after looking at the deck that topped from New York and thinking about my personal matchup experiences. Um, so for the grade threes, we cut Gerland and added Loris because adding Loris gives us access to doing the stride up turn if we want. And to be honest, Gerland was always just worse Laura. So most of the time I can just go Laura anyways. So just having the opportunity to do the ride-up turn if I want is very good, and I'll explain more why when I get to the G-Zone later. Um, so for grade twos, we cut Murata, because I was going to cut her eventually for the ride fixer anyways, but I saw this card in the list that topped, 
and honestly, I just like that it has resist. Really good for the Narukami matchup, deny them one of the front row circles. So they draw one less if they go into exterminate, which is very big for them. 10k less power, makes everything easy to guard. It, it's just really nice. And most of the time you have extra CB, so whenever you bounce her, it's just a free CB, draw a card. Easy. Uh, whenever the Ride Fixer does come out, I don't know if we'll be getting more support, so it might be a while before there's another deck profile. But I think I'm probably going to end up cutting this card, or maybe Melty, but probably this to add the Ride Fix card. Uh, for Great Ones, I cut Radka and added Rolok. Because if you are getting attacked early and you have Rolok, it is just a free PG. Like, they hit a crit on something, you're like, no, nah, I'm good. I don't want to take that. Or if you're, like, riding down, anything like that, having Rolok in your hand is nice. Because ride down, you don't have access to your G guard. You don't have access to your heal guard, like, plus 10k. So just having the option of the free PG is nice. Uh, Triggers-wise... Since I'm taking Federica out of the G-Zone, I was able to add more of the same triggers. So I bumped this up to 3 because I would do 4, but it has the same name as this, and I like to run my 1 of Crit Sentinel. So I cut the 2 Overdress draws I was running. Easy as that. Uh, G-Zone wise, I cut the On Stride because the only reason we ran that stride anyways really was for the Link Choker matchup. But we have Heltrata, our main stride that just deals with that matchup for us anyways. And then we have Harmonix Messiah, which is like worst, worst case. We don't have a CB, we don't have anything. We just unlock ourselves. Uh, and then we took out Federica to add the new stride, new updated stride, not new stride. Because after talking with Crow, my good teammate, Love him, he's the homie, and my friend Ryan Velasquez, who I talk to a lot when I make decisions for my decks. Um, we came to the conclusion that Reindeer has a way higher, like, if I just stay on V and do the Reindeer turn, it's a way higher top end. Like, I can get a lot more out of it, I can get more force markers, I can ride down if I want, I can have options to a lot more. But... The Loris ride-up turn with the stride is more consistent. So if I'm playing in a matchup where I just need to, like, stay alive or, like, I just need to keep something in hand for, like, their attack and I have it, I can go into this, bounce, get my triple drive, get my four attacks, just have a solid turn. Not anything special, not like a cracked out turn, but just a solid turn. So having the option to have the ride up turn instead of always just doing a ride down or always just staying on V just feels a lot better. But other than that, I don't think I'd change much else. So thank you guys for watching the video. That's my opinions. This is the deck, lo deck log I'm going to be running with. Uh, thank you to Devlin for inviting me to the channel. Really appreciate it. Love for the homie. Nothing but love. Hope he gets a lot of subscribers. That being said, make sure y'all like and sub to help Devlin out. Uh, Shop Kingslayer cards. I think Devlin has the code Scholar. But other than that, hope you guys have a great day. This has been my deck log. Peace.